Ambassador Christian College now presents the Keeslow Commentary with Dr. Keeslow. Hi again. I want to talk to you today about how to get God to bless you. This is very important to understand this. Without faith, we cannot please God. That's Hebrews 11.6. So we ought to realize that if we're going to please God, we're going to have to exercise faith. I asked God one time, I said, how come you're so big on faith? I, I said, if I need something, how come you don't just let me have it if I need it? rather than making me have all this faith. And I didn't hear a, a voice that came back to me, but sometimes God speaks to your heart, and he just drops the answer right into your heart, and just bingo, like that, I knew the answer. And it, it was as if God said to me, I mean, I just knew it. There was a knowing I had. And when God speaks to your heart, there's just all of a sudden a knowing. You know the answer. And it was as if he said to me, because when you exercise faith, you're demonstrating your love. And so if you want to please God, you've got to have faith because faith demonstrates your love. Do you know there's a scripture there in Galatians that says that faith worketh by love? Even the faith you have works by love. Faith is a demonstration of your love. Now, in Matthew 7, verse 7, it says, Ask and you'll receive. We've all asked for things that we did not receive, every one of us. Every one of us have prayed for things we didn't get. So how do you explain that scripture? Well, 1 John 5, 14, 15 says, This is the confidence we have in God. If we ask anything according to his will, then he hears us. Now, I've told you on past programs, God's will is his word, and I've given you the scriptures to prove that. His will is simply whatever he says. He doesn't speak contrary to his will. So when the Bible says anything we ask according to his will, it, in other words, what we're asking agrees with his word. You see? In other words, if I say, Lord, please kill all my enemies, no, no. The Bible says, pray for your enemies, and it says, love even your enemies. Or if I say, God, let me have so-and-so's wife, well, now that's breaking the Tenth Commandment because I'm coveting and would ultimately break the Seventh Commandment. So, in other words, what I'm praying is out of the will of God. And if you pray those kind of prayers and you have not got an answer, now you know why. So how are we supposed to pray? Well, we're supposed to pray based on the promises we find in God's Word. Let me read you a scripture here that's quite inspiring. It's James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, generously, and, and he, he doesn't upbraid, he doesn't scold you, and it shall be given him. Now, maybe you say, well, Keith, it's not wisdom that I need. I need finances. I need this, that, the other. I need a job, whatever it is. If any of you lack anything, it doesn't just apply to wisdom. Let him ask of God, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. So anything is obtained the same way wisdom is. Did you see that? That's James 1, verses 5 through 7. So let's substitute the word anything for the word wisdom. Maybe now... It's always good to pray for wisdom. But maybe you're praying for something else specifically. If any of you lack anything, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally, and upbraids not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. Now, the word wavering in Greek is elsewhere translated doubting or to doubt. So you could... They could actually have translated this way. Let him ask in faith, doubting nothing. In other words, you have to believe that what you say comes to pass. That's Mark eleven twenty three. Let him ask in faith, doubting nothing. Don't doubt at all. For let not that man think you shall receive anything of the Lord. For he that doubts is like a wave of the sea. For he that wavers, the King James says. That's why they translated it waver. It goes along with the, the idea of a wave. He that wavers is like a wave of the sea tossed to and fro 
Don't let any man think he shall receive anything of the Lord if he's wavering, if he's doubting. So when you come to God, you have to believe that God is really going to give you this. You say, hold on, how do I know God's going to give it to me? All right, listen to this. Here's your confidence. You don't have any confidence if you ask that question. 1 John 5, 14 says, This is the confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, And if we know that he hears us, then whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desired of him. End of quote. Did you see that? So here's the confidence we have in God that if we pray to him in agreement with his will, which I've proved on past programs is God's word, Mark 3.35, Luke 8.21, God's word is his will. So if it agrees with his word, it is his will. Now you pray in agreement with what his written word says, and bingo, you got it. You see how you, you believe? Now, if you say, well, you know, I don't know whether he's going to do it or not. He said he would, didn't he? Did he lie about it? Did God lie? Does God ever tell you a lie? The answer is no. In the book of Numbers, Old Testament verse here, but it's very important. In the book of Numbers, <clears throat> we're told Numbers 23, verse 19, I believe it is, and I'm quoting this from memory. I don't have it written down here, and I don't have my Bible open to that verse, but it says, God is not a man that he should lie. Has he spoke or, or has he spoken sh and, and shall he not do it? Or has he said it and shall he not do it or, or make it good? I, again, like I said, I don't have my Bible open to it. Has God said it and won't he do it? You can look this up yourself. Numbers 23, verse 19. Did God say it? If he said it, won't he do it? Has he spoken and won't he make it good? Like making a promise good? When God says, I'm going to do something, that's a promise. And if God spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Why? Because verse 19 starts out this way. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man, meaning human, that he should repent. God doesn't need to repent. So, oh, I didn't really mean what I said. No. If God made you a promise by George, he's going to carry it out. God is going to do it. And that's where your faith comes in right there. Faith is, the Greek word faith is the same Greek word translated believe or belief. To have faith is believe, and faith is the word translated belief. Same word. There's no difference between faith and, and belief. It's the same thing. So God doesn't need to lie. He's almighty. The only reason you ever told a lie when you were a kid is because you were scared you might get caught. You were scared you'd get punished. You were afraid you told a lie out of fear. God's not afraid of you. That's pretty profound. Let me repeat that. God is not afraid of you, and he's not going to lie to you. God has no reason to lie to anybody. In fact, God gave Lucifer, before he became Satan, this earth to rule for thousands of years. We don't know how many exactly. And when the devils that were in this demon-possessed man saw Jesus walking down the street one day, they said, Oh, dear me, has he come to torment us before the time? Because they know there, there's just a, a period of time when they are their, their lease on this earth is going to be up. And they're going to be punished. Before the time? That's what they asked. So there's a specific time that God gave them. And when Lucifer became the devil and, and the demons, the angels, the fallen angels, followed the devil, God would not even repent of his promise to Satan, the devil, back when Satan was a good angel. God created him as a good angel, and he had free choice, and he made the wrong choice. And he became a rebellious person and a rebellious angel. Angels are people, you know. They're not humans, but they're persons. They have personality. They are personalities. And so God won't even lie to the devil. He's sure not going to lie to you. <clears throat> Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. So in 1 John 5, 14, it says, This is the confidence we can have that if we ask anything according to his will, we got it. 
So we need to ask according to his will. But his will is his word. So is it God's will for you to have your finances? Well, Philippians 4, starting in about verse 13, going down through verse 19. Paul told the Philippians, because you have been supplying the need of the ministry, you've been supporting the gospel, therefore, verse 19, God will supply all your need. Now, don't take that out of context and say, God said he'd supply the needs of all people. No, he didn't say that. He said he would supply the needs of those who are supporting his work, his ministry, and being involved in winning souls and preaching the gospel and that type of thing. So if you're doing that, then you come to God and say, supply my need. He's made you a promise. And he cannot go back on his word. He can't. If God went back on his word, he'd be a liar. He's not the son of man that he should repent. He's not going to repent of what he's promised. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. That's Numbers twenty three nineteen. That's one of my favorite scriptures, and it's way back there in the book of Numbers where a lot of Christians don't bother to read. But there it is. This is the confidence we have in him that if we pray according to his will, we got it. We got it. His will is expressed in his promises, and he's promised to supply your need. If you're doing your part, he's promised to supply your need. Now, you can go to God in prayer and say, God, I have been doing my part. I've been paying my tithe. I've been giving offerings over and above the tithe. You pay the tithe. You don't give the tithe. You pay it. The, the giving begins at 11%, you might say. And so you pay the tithe, then you give over and above that. And then on top of that, give to the poor and be a blessing to other people. You do those three steps, and I teach this at Ambassador Christian College, and God is going to meet your needs. If he does not, he's a liar. Think about that. God is a bold-faced liar if he doesn't meet your need. When I was uh, 21 years old, I had an incurable birth defect in my brain. And I went to God, and I read through these scriptures on healing and, and God's promises. And I said, now, Lord, I'm going tomorrow to go to church because I've been on medication, and it was getting so I was going to have to have stronger medication. Long story, I'll make it real short, um, is that I didn't I wasn't, didn't have access to get back to the doctor. My doctor was 1,000 miles away. And I was in college as a full-time student and didn't have... Um, or about to be a full-time student. I started out as a part-time student. And then I didn't have the money to, to go to a doctor anyway. So I went to the Lord. I said, you know, I couldn't afford to, to get more medication. Besides, there was no cure for what I had in my brain. I wanted total healing. I said, tomorrow I am going to get prayed for, and when that minister anoints me with oil, I will receive my healing. God cannot keep you. Well, he could, but he won't keep you from receiving your healing. You can receive it by faith. Now, I didn't know whether God would do it immediately or gradually, but I knew that I knew that I knew that God's word was true and I'd be healed. The next morning I went to church and I didn't take any medication with me. I didn't, I didn't take any that whole day. And do you know, I knew by that afternoon because I hadn't had a single problem that I was healed. And that's been, oh, a long time ago. It's been years and years ago, and I'm still healed. I'm still healed. You want to build up your faith. Now, we've got an article on faith and healing, and we'll send it to you free of charge, no request for money. Call this number. If you've got a pencil, jot this down real quickly, 704-938-6415. I'll give you the number again in just a moment. Get that pencil. Write this down. It's called uh, Faith and Healing. Just ask for Lesson 13. I'll know what you're talking about. Lesson 13 on Faith and Healing, and we'll get this to you right away. And also ask for information about Ambassador Christian College. We are now taking applications. Call and ask for information about it. If you'll call today, we'll promise you a $1,000 scholarship. How about that? And the difference is quite good. I'm telling you, you, I don't think you can beat this anywhere at any accredited college in the entire state. I don't think you can. It's a wonderful opportunity, and you can get a degree going two nights a week in one year. Here's the telephone number one more time. And be sure to ask for Lesson 13, 704 938 Until next time, this is Keith Slough saying, be sure to tell your friends where to listen and tell the folks in your church, tell your pastor where to listen. 
And if you know people in other states, tell them that they can go to ambassadorchristiancollege.com and listen to us. Uh, no, no, they have to go to forbroadcasting.com and listen to us live. Until next time, this is Keith Slough. Goodbye, friends. You've been listening to Dr. Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. Join us again next Sunday at the same time for the broadcast of the Keith Slough Commentary on 1140 WRNA, 1460 WRKB, and FordBroadcasting.com.